told you everything? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, well, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> well, from your perspective, did you approach the season differently as one of the writing team, knowing that you only have X number of episodes left? Uh, okay, yeah, of course. Uh, the uh, you realize everything kind of has to count for more because you can't just go episode after episode down the road and not you know pay something off. I mean, everything takes on I don't know a, a new. Uh, a, a new weight when you know this is it. And we were just talking upstairs, the end of our scripts, I don't know if you've ever seen any of our scripts, the, the, the scripts never say fade out the end, they always say to be continued, and that's been for 15 years, or going into 15 years. But finally, the last script that Andrew's gonna write will be the first script in supernatural history that says the end at the bottom, and that's gonna be, we, we thought about that, Ooh, I mean, it's just it's a weird thought. So yeah, it does kind of hang over your, your head, your thinking. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about some of the old monsters like, that, that they previously defeated that have come back? Like we saw a couple of them in the finale, but some that they'll be facing in like maybe the first few episodes? Uh, only that there will be that. Okay. Uh, you know, it's, it's fun because it's... And it's not just the monsters. I mean, it's other characters, people who haven't did, never made it past season four or something. Because I think uh, one of the fun things about this season is paying homage to the, what came before, honoring the past of Supernatural, and bringing those people back. But not not just in a token way, but to let them do things that maybe you haven't seen them do before, have them uh, attempt to do things that you haven't seen them do before. So I think there's a lot of fun in that. As you're reaching out to these people, assuming you're having the same actors play the monsters that originally played them, are they surprised that you're like, 10 years later, you're calling them, asking like, can you reprise this role? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, it's just, uh, you know, it's, uh, some of them were beyond bringing back. They, they, you know, they said this was no possibility because they were finished. <laughs> Mary Winchester, you can put yeah. in that category. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, there, there are some that just thought they were never going to hit that phone ring, and, and they did. You know? So it's uh, it's going to be interesting, and it's, it's so much fun. You, know, you just hope they haven't aged so much beyond what they used to look like. <laughs> so the, the makeup crew will have, have their work cut out. What was the actual process like, considering you guys do have so many episodes to kind of pick from? Was there some kind of, like, thematic that you found was there. Oh, for who you're bringing back? Who you're bringing back. I, think, I think emotional way. I think, I think the, the show's bread and butter is that it's not just been caper driven, but it's been so character driven and the people who, who count emotionally and, and, they, and they count for our guys, count, you know, mean something to them personally. So that was, I think, kind of the litmus test. And I don't want to give the impression that it's going to be wave after wave of people. I mean, you know, start getting a little old. But as they fit into the story, people come back and, and you know, Play a new role. We've seen the brothers ally themselves with other hunters, um, with angels, with demons. When you know there's been a big collective threat. <clears throat> now that God is essentially setting out to destroy the entirety of that world, are they going to find unlikely allies or enemy? Are there are there beings that want the world to end, or and they have to fight them? They will find unlikely allies. You know, it, it, it it's so interesting because. You know, if you, on the panel, I was saying that uh, it's un really unusual for a show that's been on as long as this to actually do, do a game changer. But I, I think that's really accurate with this because uh, the, the whole exploration of your belief system, first of all, but also what the nature of free will is. If, if humans were given free will so that they can essentially solve their own problems as pro things prop up and, and God might intervene if it was something super. But when you think then that this God that you always had a somewhat kind of faith in is actually causing catastrophic events, then aren't you then obligated to use your free will to do what you can to prevent that and uh, stop it? So the, t uh, the whole concept of free will takes on a new meaning. It's not something that was granted, it's something that you've got and that now you have to use somehow against the one who granted it to you. So it's, you know, it's, it's interesting. It seems like there could be some humor in testing the free will versus uh, predetermined Road there. Yes. How much fun are you guys actually having with that? How much, and which of the brothers is having a little bit more joy? Uh, it's it's funny. It's, a pause formed over the world with this things aren't working like they used to. And there's a there's kind of a fun episode 
where everybody has to uh, accept the fact that things aren't working by the old rules. So all the things that used to work for Cass or Sam or Dean, or, you know, nothing makes sense. So, so, so there's that. Uh, there's not a lot of comedy episodes planned because they're just the mistakes are so high this season. So just levity where levity can live, but no uh, really farcical episode. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.